Okay, welcome back. We're on the next day of the project. All the shells are lined up here in a row, like planes at an airport. We have, I have the sanding table set up with 100 grit, 150 grit, and then the router table right here. We have the half inch round over bit uh, right there, which is getting ready to reestablish this bearing edge, which is a half inch round over. Um, <clears throat> bearing edge is the most important part of the drum. This is where all of the tone happens. And you can see some of these drums have a bearing edge where it is tilted in. So it goes straight up here and then it goes in at a 30 degree. But most of the drums have this beautiful rounded edge here as you can see, so the drum head can come up. And what I'm trying to do, this drum was uh, factory cut backwards. So I'm gonna fix that. Um, my first video, I mentioned that it appears that it was a snare drum shell that they turned into a tom at the factory, but left all the snare drum elements on, including the snare drum bearing edge. Um, so we have a lot of damage on these shells. So, um, where that drum head, this edge here, where that drum head touches the shell is not flat on every single, almost every single one of these edges. Most drums have a decent edge on one side and then a horrific edge on the other. So I'm gonna start on the sanding table, move to um, the router, alternate between them a little bit to try to clean things up. Okay, I finished the first drum. This is the big conversion one. You can see that it has a nice rounded edge. Now that matches the vintage profile. Uh, so now I have to seal it, wax it, um, but I won't, I'll do all the sealing at the same time. Unfortunately, you can see things like this little doozy right here. Uh, we discover voids inside the drum and all sorts of things. Um, done some research and seeing, you know, Gretsch never made their own shells. This was outsourced to the Jasper Wood Company. So, um, yeah, say what you want about quality control when you're not in charge. All right, now I get to do the same rounded edge. I'm just gonna clean up a lot of these edges with the same, same technique. All right, so we now have all of the bearing edges finished. Everything has been sanded on the table. All of the toms have the round over edge, the total beautiful round over edge, and the snare drum and bass drum. If you notice the bass drum shell is quite a bit thicker. Uh, I actually haven't counted the plies yet. One, two, three, four, still a six ply, but it must have thicker plies in it. Um, so for this, we did the more traditional profile. This already had, uh, 30 degree cut. I just added a little bit of a round over on the outside um, to kind of blend Gretsch's two kinds of bearing edges together. Uh, some actually were made this way apparently. Um, I didn't want to go a full round over on the bass drum. The snare drum was able to um, retain its classic 30 degree. Also on this just sort of flattened it out and trued it up. Um, and then hand sanded both these hand, I don't have a 30 degree chamfer bit, so I had to hand sand this to get these, um, the inside cuts. I, I left the original cuts, but had to hand sand them to clean them up. And then just did this light round over on the outside just to kind of let the head come over the edge. So next step is going to remove all of the painter's tape, uh, going to fill any of the voids that are in the edges to prepare it for uh, sealing the edges and waxing the edges, and then, um, then the shells are almost finished.
Okay, the drums now have been, the shells are finished. This is very exciting. We have now three coats of polyurethane, actually urethane, oil urethane on the edge. I did three coats instead of two, just so that it would maybe the color would match a little bit better with this old finish on top. Uh, and then did two wax coats of uh, finished paste um, to kind of help even out some of the gum, which has lots of little pits in it. So yeah, shells are looking awesome. They're just sitting here, they're gonna dry. Uh, those wax takes about an hour to get totally hard. Um, and then over here, I have polished up all of the chrome. Um, and so I am ready to start assembling tomorrow and we'll get those drums put back together. A couple little tiny parts that I still need waiting for in the mail, uh, but we're getting close. So 60th birthday of these drums, almost complete. Okay, I'm delighted to show you the final product. We have done all of my reassembly and tuning and new heads and all this sort of stuff. So to, I did cover the holes uh, from the original plates. I left one open at the top so that um, we could get a little bit of a vented sound, let the drum breathe just a tiny bit. I uh, didn't want to enlarge that hole and put a grommet in there at all. Uh, so my, my philosophy of this restore is that everything that is not um, vintage has to be removable. So uh, that's why the mounting plate here is external. I kept all the parts, all the internal muffler parts, everything so that if ever I uh, wanted to sell it, I could give the buyer all of the original parts that I've taken off the kit. Um, this 12 inch was the biggest problem. It had all sorts of, of uh, issues with the shell, but it sounds great now. Um, I was able to find the more appropriate vintage um, tacks for the middle of this. The previous restorer had just put on uh, ones that didn't match, so have that all mounted up correctly. The bass drum I'm super excited about, have the Remo um, felt tone with the built-in strip here. So this is actually a false muffler now. It just goes into a screw in the back. But really excited about having on this side, uh, on the kick, we have the original Pratt muffler. So you can see that I can take it off and that the, um, the muffler gets less, uh, you know, just sort of starts floating versus tight to the head. So I have lots of ability to change the tone. Yeah, over here, we have two side projects, had nothing to do with this rebuild, uh, but this Gretsch drum here, this is a modern Gretsch piccolo 10 inch snare, but I took the wrap, I had this drum over here, the 14 originally was wrapped in that um, green sparkle. So I had kept that wrap and it turned out that the whole configuration matched almost exactly between a 10, uh, 10 inch with a six lug and the 14 inch with eight lug. Um, so cut it into some pieces and was able to fit it onto this um, and only have a couple of very tiny exposed uh, marks on uh, on the wrap, but otherwise it's completely uh, restored or, or, or now matches uh, my authentic 15 inch snare drum, my big green drum here, put the modern green head on it just to make it look cooler. But now I have a nice low pitch uh, snare drum. So without further ado, we're gonna do some playing here. Uh, to show you how great these drums sound. <laughs> 